Hello there, and welcome back to Japan's Perfect Pens for another Namiki Emperor review. Today, we are going to be reviewing this pen. This is the Namiki Emperor Chinkin Hawk pen. So this was made by the late, great Shuji Michikami in 2008. And this is one of my very favorite pens, and I very much wish I owned it. Now, there are going to be two more videos done including this pen. One will be a video of different chinkin pens and comparing them as in this image. And the second video, I'll take two Namiki chinkin hawks and two Namiki emperor goldfish and examine what the difference is in these handmade pens in detail. But for now, today, we're going to look at the Namiki chinkin hawk. So let's take a quick look at the pen. There is a hawk on the cap standing on a pine branch, here he is, and there are pine needles of the pine tree around the rest of the pen. Now, this chinkin is gold powder, which is why it looks gold, it's not paint. We'll talk about how chinkin works in a second, I'll just rotate the pen so you can see lots of pine on the back, and the hawk on a branch, and at the bottom there, there's a little bit of Raiden work, just there. And there's some absolutely fantastic detail on the hawk's feathers, especially just here. Really fantastic Raiden work. So, in terms of the pen size and shape, it's a rounded cap Namiki Emperor, which means it's an ebonite eyedropper pen, 17 centimeters long. It's got no maki on the clip, and it's got a two-tone size 50 18 karat gold nib. Now, chinkin is where the shapes are actually carved out of the urushi lacquer. And then when they've made the carving of the image, they then put some urushi onto it, which is, fills in the gaps and is sticky. And onto that, they either sprinkle gold powder or they put gold foil, which goes into the gaps. And so everything you can see here, every line is a chiseled, carved line that's got gold, either in powder or foil form, put into it. And then over the top, some more lacquer. So then they polish off the remaining gold and it leaves you with this stunning image which looks very much like it is suspended on top of the pen with a bit of depth to it. So it doesn't look like flat paint. So again, in the same way as the macchier can be raised to create the 3D effect, the chinkin actually is embedded into the pen and also gives you this slightly 3D effect. So that's how chinkin works. This is a particularly fine example of chinkin, which means it's quite complex. There are several different types of chinkin used. Um, there's lots of dots and there's lots of lines, which are two different ways of doing chinkin. So just rotate the pen. You can see the feathers on the hawk, especially on the breast of the hawk there. They have incredibly detailed and intricate chinkin to create that. And then the pine needles are predominantly lines, single lines carved, and then dots are used for the wood. So you can see this variation in techniques. And then the really outstanding thing is these little circular patterns on the feathers. So there's the artist's signature, also carved into the pen. And the thing about chinkin is if you make a single significant mistake, there's no undoing it. With Macchio, you're effectively painting on layers and they might be 3D layers, but you can remove and repaint if you have to. Whereas with chinkin, if you make a bad mistake, that's it, the pen is done. So you can also see here some Raiden work on the branch. So Raiden is mother of pearl, thin layers of the inside of the shells cut into the shapes. In this case, it's got seven or eight small pieces. They put urushi to bond it into place and then charcoal burnished on top. So it does give you that little bit of color contrast, which makes it a very focal point of the pen. There's two focal points, one of which is the hawk and the second one of which is this beautiful Raiden work at the bottom. And as I put the pen in different lights, you can see when it catches the light, it gives you the greens, the purples, and the blue, these different shades. Rotate the pen and they really come to life. So there's two focal points, one's on the cap and the other one's on the barrel. And I think it gives it good balance. And if you've been listening to my videos, you'll know that I'm a fan of balance in the pens. So there are some pens that don't do that, I'm thinking, a good example is the Namiki Emperor Tiger, which we'll have a review for at some point. That's also a chinkin pen. It has this fabulous tiger on the cap of the pen. 
and on the barrel of the pen it has some plant life but the plant life isn't quite in as much detail as the tiger and there's quite a strong contrast because the tiger is really the focal point and the barrel is quite secondary by comparison so I prefer this balance. Now opening it up here is the very large size 50 Namiki nib we'll talk about that in just a second and looking down the pen here you can see the Raiden really shining. There we go, in the light. It's really, really beautiful. So, let's talk about the nib. This is an Amiki size 50 nib, which means it's 18 karat gold nib. They write smoothly and they have a wet flow. It's controlled by the valve. The valve acts effectively as an on-off and it's got a two-tone Mount Fuji snow cap on it. If you just bought a size 50 Urushi in black or vermilion, you'd see it's single tone, even though everything else about the pen dimensions are identical. The Chinkins and the Mackie models have this second tone to the snow cap on Mount Fuji. So you can have a good look at it here. Now I have a dedicated Namiki Emperor writing review video because there are going to be so many videos of Namiki Emperors and most of them I'm not going to write with. What I did is I took three Namiki Emperors and I wrote with those three. And if you have a look at the video with this thumbnail, and the name of it there, Nimiki Emperor Fountain Pen Writing Sample and Review. There you can have a look at how these things write. They're very interesting. I really like writing with them. They do suit large hands and they do take a bit of learning to use because they're large and your hand's quite far away from the paper. So the Chinkin pen is quite interesting because it isn't really made the same way that Mackie pens are made. It is made by doing a huge amount of chiseling. They put the design on the lacquer then they use their chisels to carve out the shape. After that, they put the Arushi on, put the gold powder on, and polish off the remaining content. Now that takes a lot of time, and if they make a serious mistake, the pen is ruined. But by contrast, the Mackie pens are all about adding a layer of Mackie, putting the pen away for the Arushi to harden, coming back to it. So it's a certain amount of work, wait, work, wait, work, wait. Whereas the Chinkins, is much more intensive manual work but effectively someone could sit there and just do nothing but one pen until it is largely finished. So in that regards they are less multi-layered than the Mackie pens but no less difficult and require no less mastery and I particularly love them. They are pens a bit like the Raiden work on the Mackie pens, the chinking gold really favours being looked at in a good light and held in real life. So look, I hope you enjoyed that chinkin pen and please like and subscribe for many more Namiki Emperor reviews coming up on this channel. Thank you very much and have a great day.